Perry Larson grew up around boats. The family business on Vashon Island, Washington State, was a manufacturer of plywood power boats. After graduating from the University of Washington with a degree in mathematics, he was employed by the Boeing Company. In Harry's 35 years with Boeing, he held the position of business planning manager of Boeing Marine Systems. In this video, Harry will be describing active ride control systems for hydrofoils. Narrated by Ray Valenga. We will be discussing the range of roll and height hydrofoil control systems, passive mechanical feedback, and electronic feedback systems. The Volga has two foils at the bow, one near the surface and the other about one inch below. The tips of the upper foil plane on the surface. They provide both roll and height stability. Their low angle of attack causes them to pierce short steep waves rather than ride over them. This design works well in small waves. In large waves, at lower and counter frequencies, the boat is subject to wave-induced motion. Due to the rotation of water in the wave, surface piercing hydrofoils tend not to lift adequately when encountering waves in a following sea, resulting in the nosing of the next wave. The foiler flies higher than the Volga. For roll stability, the surface piercing foils must be further abeam. The change in roll restoring force as a function of the water surface relative to the foil is less than that of the Volga's planing plate, resulting in a softer ride, but one that is less stable. Compared to a hydrofoil with aft surface piercing foils, the submerged aft foils reduce pitch variation caused by the waves. On the port side can be seen a planing plate just above the water's surface. There is a foil below providing most of the lift. The wide stance coupled with the planing plate provide roll stability. The bow has an articulated submerged foil with a surface follower projected forward on a four bar linkage. It has a 0.1 radiant per foot of wave height feedback to control the foil's angle of attack. The bow does not dive into following seas as is typically the case with surface piercing hydrofoils. The main foils of the rave have trailing surface followers. They are linked to the foil's trailing edge flaps. The boat is very stable in roll but less so for height. The trailing surface followers are only lightly loaded. The moth also has a trailing surface follower linked to the foil's trailing edge flaps. It is lightly loaded. It is not well controlled in height. The rave and the moth each have foils with trailing edge flaps. Their surface followers are lightly loaded. When a boat pitches down, the flap is deflected, increasing lift, while the foil's pitch downward decreases lift. Thus, flap deflection must be sufficient to overcome the foil's downward pitch, but not so large as to over-control height deviation. Using incidence control, the feedback can be set to just compensate for pitch variation, and less so if the aft foil is submerged. Here you see the front foil and surface follower as seen in several Larson boats. Notice that the angle of the surface follower is high in the wave's trough and low at its peak. It is intended to fly through steep waves. This is a feature of the trailing surface follower as well. The foil pivot can be placed to adequately load the surface follower, keeping it on the water. Successful experimentation was done with a 14-foot skipper craft. It had a 25-horsepower motor with a 2-inch shaft extension. There was a 1 megahertz 8-bit Z80 computer with 10 hertz update. 
programmed in machine language. There was also an inclinometer and aircraft rate gyro that had and operated on 120 volts, 400 hertz power. Later, a Watson rate gyro was installed. There was an electric motor driven pump to do the hydraulics. This video was taken in the mid-1980s. The boat used mechanical feedback for height control and electronic electrohydraulic for roll control. At this time, all electronic hydrofoil control systems use analog computers. This is probably the first hydrofoil flown with a digital computer. Although shortly after, the Boeing company tested on its USS High Point PCH-1 an IBM PC controlling height. Digital computers at that time were not up to the meeting of the hydrofoil control problem. Let's pause and relax for a moment and just watch this boat fly. And remember, this was taken some 35 years ago. Where Submerged Foil Technology Started Its name was Sea Legs. It was the first electronically controlled submerged foil hydrofoil. It had an aircraft vertical gyro and sonic height sensors. There were 49 vacuum tubes in an analog computer that was built by the MIT Draper Lab. A dec decade later, they built the flight computer for the Eagle Moon Lander. This is a 28-foot Chris Graf. In the late 1980s, High Point was created. It had an analog flight computer. Its test flying was done on Lake Washington. This is probably the first big hydrofoil flown with a digital computer. It had an IBM PC, an 8080 microprocessor, and that controlled height only. Here is Solaria 4 using mechanical height feedback and analog electronic hydraulic control of the roll. Solaria 4 had an analog computer, Dova inclinometer, Watson rate gyro, Bennett hydraulic cylinders, an engine driven hydraulic pump, a Moog 62 series servo valves, and a PC screen. The analog computer had speed variable feedback gains. The calculation used a multiplier circuit. The Moog servo valves have a minus 3 decibel frequency of 10 hertz. The hydraulic cylinders operating the flaps had positive feedback. Here the technology is updated to 2008. Here you see some of the specifications for the digital computer, the MEMS, the carbon fiber hydraulic cylinders, the height sensors, and other things. Because of the force-speed-squared relationship, 
Hydrofoil control surfaces are sized to the takeoff speed. Typically, top speed is roughly twice the takeoff speed. Here we can talk about active ride control. The force generated by the foils is a function of the speed square. Lift equals one half rho times alpha times velocity square. In this case, one half rho equals one in seawater. Alpha is the area in feet squared and velocity is in feet per second. To calculate roll authority during takeoff, one must allow a sufficient margin for live loads, waves during takeoff, and wind. The roll authority can be increased by increasing the takeoff speed, increasing the beam of the roll control foils, or decreasing the foil load while maintaining the takeoff speed. Continuing on active ride control, for the small hydrofoils, there are going to be short struts, and that means you'll be limited to small waves. With small waves, the wave encounter frequency will be very high. To contour over these waves would cause high acceleration and a rough ride. The strut length determines the size of the small waves that can be negotiated. At hydrofoil speeds, you cannot contour over small waves. The vertical accelerations are just too high. The roll equation also describes the dynamics of the inverted pendulum. The inverted pendulum is an example of a differential equation, often shown in the first chapter of a differential equations textbook. The height equation shown has a gravitational term. Sometimes the equation is written without it. When this is the case, a constant, possibly speed varying, is added to the angle of attack. The solutions of these equations can be combined into a single system of simultaneous equations with the addition of any cross terms. For example, if the boat banks deeply in a turn, the lateral acceleration can be vector added to the gravitational acceleration in the height equation. If the boat does not bank steeply, the effect can be ignored. Here are the elements of the electronic flight control and its development. A few things to consider are the control law, the flight control program, the data download, the data analysis, digital computer, the sensors, the control surfaces, actuation system, and the display screen. Historically, there are perhaps three mainstream mathematical approaches to control law development. That is, frequency domain, state space, and H infinity. Early submerged foil hydrofoil control laws were designed using frequency domain methods. They do not involve extensive computation and were used through the 1970s for hydrofoil control law development. H infinity is now taught in engineering graduate schools. This presentation will discuss the state space approach. The feedback gains are velocity dependent. If the speed range is narrow and or the gain margins are wide, the gains may possibly be made constants. Otherwise, a speed input is needed for their recalculation within the control loop. There is much control law development software, or one can write their own. The state space approach is heavily computational, although much of it can be done offline. We see a simulation over a five second period from the initial position of 0.1 radian roll angle, zero roll angle, and zero flap position. The red line shows the control action at intervals of 1 75th of a second. In three seconds, the boat's states are brought back to zero. The simulations are used to explore the boat's dynamics. 
under a range of conditions. Control software is relatively simple. Sensors are read, states are estimated, control actions calculated and executed, display data sent out, and analysis data is saved. This is analysis data downloaded from the flight computer. This is analysis data downloaded from the flight computer. Here is some height flight data. The top graph shows the ultrasonic height sensors. They have a 15 degree transmission cone. Thus, two are needed to bank 15 degrees in either direction. At about 10.5 seconds, the starboard, that is green sensor, drops to zero, losing returns. The bottom chart shows the turn rate. At 9 seconds, a turn is initiated. This is a 2008-era computer. Faster computers are now available. Good position sensors are still expensive. In some cases, accelerometers can be used in place of position sensors intended to measure forces. High performance hydraulic valves may be required. Some of the most recent small hydrofoils are using electric drives. No screen is bright enough to see clearly in bright sunlight. Here is Candela, the most recent electronically controlled submerged hydrofoil. Together, we have reached the end of this technical presentation. The details are not easy to absorb on one pass, but we've kept them in there so that interested parties can take away the essence of what is required to recreate active ride control systems for hydrofoils.